um, for a session where the answers to the fundamental questions are known is usually a pretty straightforward task. Here, it seems to me that this um, rich and angular discussion um, largely devolves from the fact that some of the very fundamental questions, the answers are not known. Is there enough money in the system to expand treatment roles to all of the individuals who need treatment? Um, there are two views to this question. The rapporteur's responsibility that Julio gave me w did not include that I come here with the answer to that question. Um, I missed the last email, he says. Yeah, you're right, I did. Um, <coughs> another fundamental question that we don't have the answer to is, is what actually drives the costs. It's really hard to know what to do um, to optimize treatment in support of treatment for prevention or treatment for those who are desperately ill if you don't know what drives the costs of care, and we don't know. Drug costs in one study are 20%, and in another study, they're 70%. So where? You know, and th there is an answer. I don't know exactly where it is. My guess is it's gonna be in the 30, 40%. But until we actually know the answer to the question, it's really hard to prioritize uh, what to do. Should we be driving um, efforts around drugs or diagnostics or systems of delivery of care. My guess is we drive them across all, but it would sure be nice to have some guidance about where to apply those efforts based on what the actual drivers of the costs are. Another fundamental question we don't seem to have an answer for in this room, is the pipeline thin or is the pipeline robust? It clearly matters in how we approach this, in, in how we view that question and the answer to it. Um, so I, I think that the conversations, I mean, I can't sum up because there are divergent views. There, you know, I can articulate the divergences. It's not my job as rapporteur to tell you what I think or they would have asked me to be a panelist, not the rapporteur. But I, I think Paul, um, Paul said something that that, that everybody, regardless of their view, is going to agree with, and that is that the advocacy cannot cease. Clearly, it can't. However, I think we also need to be prepared, if we don't know the answer to the question of whether there's enough money in the system or not, or even if we do know the answer to that question, um, we really have to um, try to drive efficiencies within the system where it's not efficient. Carlos, before he left, mentioned the laboratory and monitoring. Um, that's clearly an example. Uh, we have to do all of this while we maintain the quality of care. I think we probably all agree with that. Um, and we have to do this in a way that we can derive the evidence to inform policy. You know, this is not the time for opinions. It's actually the time to close evidence gaps so that we can make some of the very hard decisions that the policymakers actually are faced with on, on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that it's important that we try to prioritize the activities within the work streams of drugs and diagnostics and systems of delivery of care. And I think that in order to derive those priorities. We have to first understand the cost drivers, as mentioned, and then we need to try to um, gain some expert opinions across all of the communities of stakeholders who are involved. And I know that that's some of the work that WHO and UNAIDS um, plans to undertake, to try to recognize those areas within labs, drugs, and systems of delivery where efficiencies can be driven. Um, independent of whether there's enough money in the system or not, I think that's the responsibilities that we have. And with that, I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Nathan. And I will um, thank all of the panelists and the rapporteur for the energy and the presence.